In the near-death experience, people's minds separating from body, people communicating with what appear to be deceased loved ones are all suggestive of something surviving after death. Don Piper believes it's more than just a suggestion. My experience in heaven was the most real experience of my existence. I had an eyewitness account from someone uh, who was very credible to me and trustworthy. And, and so th there, was a, um, there was a legitimacy. I know he's not prone to flights of fancy. He's a very logical, think it through person. Has always been that way. So when he talks about things that he experienced in heaven, I know that they're real. As real as heaven is to Don, others who have died and returned describe another place, one that is dark and dreadful. And they'll say uh, there were screams, there were flames, and there was sulfur. It was an agonizing, horrifying, stupefying place, and it's, uh, it's really, you could see it on their face. And then inevitably, they will say, the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you, when you share, to let people know hell is real too. Don says that he had an incredible journey to heaven during those 90 minutes. According to a Gallup poll, he's one of the 5% of Americans who have had a near-death experience. Researchers are still uncertain what exactly happens when the heart stops beating. But they cannot deny the profound impact on those who have them. Karen Coy concludes this report. People who come back from a near-death experience give differing uh, descriptions of what they, what they went through. I literally felt myself kind of floating, and I looked and I saw myself on the bed. Encountering a being of light. And then you're passing very, very fast through a tunnel. I felt incredible love. Seeing deceased relatives. I saw my great-grandmother. And the light gets brighter and brighter. Apparently unearthly realm of existence. Instantly, I was out of my body and looking at Earth. I have never felt more loved and, uh, and don't ever hope to. People will say their sense of time has changed dramatically. Often they will say time ceased to exist in the death experience. Their experiences may differ, but they never forget. Well, I've talked to people many decades after a near-death experience, and they say invariably that it's like it happened yesterday. Some wish their memories weren't so vivid. It was like being in a nightmare and trying to scream. And as hard as you tried to scream, you, you couldn't get the word, you couldn't get the sound out. And it wasn't a nightmare. It was reality. It was my reality. And I can only say that it was hell. Several years ago, Sharon Maddox underwent surgery. Under anesthesia, she became aware of herself slipping away to a dark, black place. The darkness was thick. It was, it was a total enveloping darkness. It, 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 was, it was so dark, you wouldn't have been able to see the hand in front of your face, is the way I describe it. I experienced gut-wrenching, excruciating pain. It was so unbearable. It's, I, I can't even, I don't even have the words to describe how I felt. According to Dr. Bruce Grayson, a small percentage of people, like Sharon, do have negative near-death encounters. Some of these unpleasant experiences are simply a sense of being in a black void with no sense of sight, sound, touch, just being alone for eternity, which can be a terrifying experience. Near-death experiences may vary from person to person, but Dr. Grayson says one phenomena remains constant. What I do know is that they are profoundly transformative experiences. And it's the transformation in a person's attitude, goals, and even personality that fascinates this psychiatrist. We spend a lot of time in trying to help people make fairly small changes. And here, in the blink of an eye, something happens that totally transforms a person's personality. There's a tremendous power there that if we can understand it, we could have some great tools for how to help people. There's also an urgency about um, life and death. You know, when you've had a big truck hit you, uh, when you're only 38 years old and your life ends and then you've been given it back, but it's a different life. You're mindful of the fact that this, we're very fragile. Spending time with his family is more of a priority now. Yeah. What do you think about it now? He was always a good family man, but I think he takes more time and more pleasure out of enjoying his family and making sure that we really do spend time together. 
you know what? It made me feel right at home because I was home. Heaven is home. Today, Dan travels worldwide to share his story with an eager audience. I had to find a way to take the, uh, the mess that I had uh, found myself in and uh, turn it into a message. If God can resuscitate a dead guy in a red car, he can give you a better life now and a better life in the world to come. Are you ready for that? How much lingering pain do you still have today? Quite a bit. Still in almost constant pain, Don walks with difficulty, and his left arm doesn't turn normally. But more than anything, he yearns for something more. I have had the enormous privileges and joys uh, here in life since I returned. Watched all three of my children graduate from college. I have had the privilege of walking my daughter down the aisle. But I'd rather be there. If you hear in an hour or two, word reaches you here at the church that I've been in a terrible accident and I'm not expected to live, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don Piper's experience is a fascinating one that can't be fully explained by science. Although researchers may never be able to prove near-death encounters happen, they are very real for those who experience them. Many of you watching today may have questions we didn't have time to answer. More information on this topic can be found on our website. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan Meyer. We'll see you again next time. I saw colors there that simply don't exist here. In, in the spectrum of light here, if you, if you were to get a prism and look at the, the spectrum of light, it's unlimited there. And inside, people were moving about. I weren't, really wasn't able to see the faces of the people who were inside. Um, and I really only saw people that I knew. So I think heaven is a very active place. The gate is, um, looks like it's constructed out of mother of pearl. It is uh, glimmering. It's almost translucent. Uh, even though it is a very magnificent, firm structure, it's almost like you can see through it. It's, uh, it, 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 it doesn't move, but because of the light reflecting off of it, it looks alive. More information about this program or other Life Focus episodes can be found online at www.lifefocus.tv.